Okay, who took away my bad Shyamalan? I was expecting an old happening style Shyamalan movie and I didn't get that. Who took away my bad Shyamalan? Who took away- You! I'll tell you, you son of a bitch! No! Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. Dave Batista is taking a break killing people to save the galaxy and instead just killing people to save the world in Knock at the Camp. All right, so if you've been watching me for a while, you know I love M. Night Shyamalan because you never know what you're gonna get. He is the original box of chocolates, man. You don't know if you're gonna get something that's legit pretty good, like Sixth Sense or The Visit or something like that, or if you're just gonna get some of the most entertaining garbage you've ever seen in your life, like The Happening or Old. Either way, I am usually super delighted by the movie. He is a one-of-a-kind director, and I always look forward to his flicks. And as you can imagine, with this one, I saw the trailer. I heard the premise about these people that have to kill someone in this family, and they have to decide who, because if not, the apocalypse will happen, because of course it will, <laughs> because that's always how these films work. You could have just people trapped in an elevator, and one of them's a killer, that's fine, but no, one of them has to be the devil. And here, you totally could have had just an idea about these people that's holding this family hostage and they have to choose someone to kill for whatever reason, but no, the end of the world has to be a part of it. So I was so excited to see something like this and laugh my ass off and this was so disappointing. Not because it's awful, but because it is so disgustingly all right. If you fail to choose, the world will end. Oh, in case you're wondering, no, this is not a spin-off of Cabin in the Woods. God damn it, Shyamalan, that could have been the twist! This is one of those rare reviews where I'm really gonna be struggling to find stuff to talk about because... Okay, it, it starts off with an old-school Universal logo, like the logo you would see in the late 80s or early 90s. I was wondering why they did that, and when it was done, I'm not saying this is the reason, but this is the reason I'm giving it. It is very reminiscent of those thrillers that came out in the late 80s and early 90s that were okay, but they always kind of did exactly what you thought they were gonna do, so there weren't really many surprises. Something like Single White Female or The River Wild, just films that you can't say are bad, but you can't really say are good either. You remember the premise and some of the acting, but you don't really take a lot out of it. You're not like super invested. And this is that film, man. This is like a callback to that. And if you're looking for a callback to that, well, you're in luck, because that's exactly what this is. I wanna put on my, 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 my boogie shoes. Yeah! I don't get the feeling the guy in the red can sing better than that. Apparently Shyamalan wrote this film with two other writers, and man does it show, because two-thirds of the dialogue isn't bad, but it's not good either. They're very standard lines. Once in a while, you'll get a good line out of it. Like the daughter's talking about how she has two dads and nobody else at her school has two dads. And she says, everyone seems okay with it, except for this one teacher that says, it's really great that I have two dads. And that makes me think the opposite, that she doesn't think it's really great. That's a pretty good line. Every once in a while, there's a good line like that. But majority of the time, they just sort of say very generic end of the world doomy stuff that's just enough to keep you interested in wanting to know what's going to happen by the end but you don't necessarily want to watch it till the end. This is a movie where if I found out I wouldn't be able to finish it that day I would ask someone what happened but I wouldn't go out of my way to find the movie and actually watch it. Your family has been chosen to make a horrible decision. Lady in the Water, or After Earth. Oh, God! And don't get me wrong, there are Shyamalan-isms in this. There are some of those goofy shots that's clearly trying to show off the cinematography that is not doing a very good job in this. A lot of the shots are blurry, particularly the wider shots, which is really weird. You want to see the beautiful outdoors and the people and the expressions, but they're usually out of focus. There's, of course, a ton of those extreme close-ups that are right in your face, and it feels like the actors are about to French you, and they go on way too long. And yes, occasionally Shyamalan's laughably bad dialogue does make its way through. Like, at some point, they're saying, I'm sorry, we have no choice, and one of the guys says, you always have a choice, and one of the killers says, that's true, we do always have a choice. Choice is what makes our destiny. That's a Shyamalan line. <laughs> but even when those lines do make it in, they're usually saved by the good acting. The acting is what pulls this through. 
every complimentary thing I can say about this film is about the acting. There's no bad actors in this. Everybody is working very well with either very run-of-the-mill dialogue or again just not very good dialogue and they make it sound for the most part pretty natural or beautifully unnatural like the four killers in this are supposed to be awkward weird people and they play it really well even when the dialogue is very very strange or they say stuff that everyday people wouldn't say they make it very clear these are not everyday people so it does work and if anything it adds to the comedy and the awkwardness of the situation my name's leonard it's nice to meet you well I'm just your typical second grade teacher covered in tattoos. Yeah, okay, there's a difference between being a fit teacher and a goddamn ex-wrestler. The movie also does an okay job not necessarily spelling out what's going on, if this is the end of the world or if it's just some crazy people in a cabin. They kind of blur that line, they go back and forth. The word that's getting thrown around a lot for this film, and it's hard for me to disagree, is boring. And Shyamalan films should be anything but boring. Honestly, in my memory, I can only think of one boring Shyamalan film, and that's Last Airbender. All the others, whether they're good or bad, they're entertaining as hell. Now, this is not like Last Airbender. This does have better writing, better acting, and so forth. But the writing for the characters is not anything that spectacular to the point where when it actually got to the end, I won't go into spoilers, but when it did get to the end, I was saying, do I really care if these people live or die? And I really didn't. I didn't find anyone annoying, but I didn't find them very interesting either. I kind of just listen to it. It goes in one ear and out the other, and then it's just kind of over. And it is one of those films where if you really think about the choices that everybody's making, no matter what side you believe, whether it's just crazy people or it's really the end of the world, everybody still makes stupid choices or just things happen that don't make sense. My personal favorite is that they say, we just got footage of this tidal wave happening on this beach and they show it and you know, you've seen the trailers, it's this giant tidal wave just, you know, totally engulfs everybody and you literally see footage underwater like a person was filming it with their phone and then the phone got lost how did they get that footage and how did they get it so quickly did they just find the phone in the water and it was waterproof i guess there's tons of situations where a character can escape and they don't or even the killers should be made aware of something of how a character is going to escape and they miss it there's tons of things like that but they're not to a point where they're annoyingly bad or they're ruining the film, at least they weren't for me, because there wasn't enough to keep me that invested. And, pff, God, yeah, I am really struggling, man. This movie just did not leave an impression on me at all. Um, do I recommend it? Do I say yes, go out and see this movie? I think because I just was not invested in the outcome at the end. I mean, it's this big emotional moment at the end and I just had no emotional investment at all, despite everybody acting their hearts out. I think I gotta say probably not. This is a film where if it's streaming, you might want to check it out there, and even then, it's a big might. I can see somebody seeing this film and leaving saying, nah, it's all right. Nothing groundbreaking, but it gets the job done, I suppose. But I can also see someone watching this at home and just being like, what else is on? And putting on something else. So let's give it two and a half out of four Shyamalan infomercials. Yeah, I will give him that. If it doesn't work out as a director, he actually isn't that bad doing infomercials in this movie. That's his cameo. and He's actually okay at it. So with that said, what were your thoughts? Did you really like this film? Do you think that it was gripping and it was intense and it kept you guessing the whole way through and you love what it did at the end? Or did you feel like it was kind of boring and it was dull and the stupid choices that the characters make were just too many and didn't make any sense? Or are you like me and somewhere in between okay and Okay. Okay is you recommend it, and McKay is, yeah, not really. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you next time. Take care.